just take a seat, pull out your DQG journal. We're going to be doing our daily and quotation journal. Just sit down. I'm going to read the, the quote as you get your journal out. So the quote says, she thought freedom's a hard-bought thing, not bought with dust, but bought with all of oneself, the bones, the spirit, and the flesh. And once obtained, it had to be cherished, no matter what the cost. Harriet Tubman, this is in chapter 17 of the book that we're reading, okay? So copy this down, write something that you're thankful for as you file in. Remember that this is silent work time and not chit chat time. Now it's up. So obtained, that means gotten or taken, so something was not in your possession and now it is. So she's saying that once you have freedom, that you have to cherish it, you have to value it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Francis? Yeah, just anything that you're thankful for, just like what we have been doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to be finishing up, guys. If you did not write what you were thankful for, that, that's okay. We'll write that later. What I do want you to do is I want you to turn it to your partner and pair share with them. Tell them what you are thankful for. Sounds like you guys are thankful for a lot, which is really great because next week is Thanksgiving. So make sure that you tell your family that you are thankful for them and that you love them. But going back to Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman did not have a life that we have. We have a lot to be thankful for, but yet Harriet was still really thankful. She was thankful for her freedom. She was thankful for John. I mean, we can look at the patchwork quilt back in chapter 17 as well. She was thankful for a lot. So it's important for us to understand her character and how the author portrays her in the story. Okay, so that's why that is our quote today. Let's talk about the agenda a little bit. So we are going to be going through the author's purpose for your book. We're going to be wrapping up the book today. Yay! So we're going to do the author's purpose, why the text was written in the first place, how you knew that it was the author's purpose. This is all going to be done after we do our pie chart that you guys are familiar with. And I will be teaching you a new chart, which is called the lemonade chart, ADE. This is going to be the chart in which you talk about the author's purpose and how you know that it is the purpose. Before we do that though, we gotta finish our book. So if I call your name, you're gonna go back to the reading nook. You can pick any spot, a bean bag, a chair, and you're going to be reading silently. So Bertie, Farrell, Kent, Lolita, Maria, Mason, Brandy, Nick, Noah, Desi, Charlene, Donnie, Sophia, Stuart, Terrence, Wade, Emma, Francis, Francesca, and Jade. You guys are all going to go in the back, and I'm going to have you read it silently. If I did not call your name, you're going to come join me up here, and we're going to talk about what you're going to do in a second. Hi, guys. Yeah, come by in. Okay, so I want Enrique and Inez here. I want Diana and Fatma. I want you guys to go here. Wendell and Eduardo come around this way and then go here. Arturo and Wellington, you're gonna go here. Sorry, excuse me. Frederick and Yang, you're going here, okay? So pick a pair A, pick a pair B. You guys are gonna be getting together and I want you to alternate paragraphs and read it to each other, okay? Yeah, I don't have any questions. Okay, this is page 143, everybody. So we are just finishing up the book, and you've got a few more minutes to read. Hey, Nick and Noah, for reading here with me, please. Yeah, Wendell, that says indomitable. That's a good question. So it means that she is resolved. She can't 
soft. Yeah, good question. Hey, Meg and Noah, meet me over here. Yeah, we're gonna have to be up here with the group that's meeting together. I want you to be up there since we're talking. Okay. Okay, you can just sit right here. Yes. So you're gonna be making it. The first paragraph, maybe we can say a bunch of each other so that we're not distracting other people in the back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to all pause and we're wrapping up reading. So hands up, heads up, and we're going to be transitioning back to your seats. So remember, we're going to be silent and we're going to not move until I say go. Even if you haven't finished, you can get a chance to read at the end. So you're going to go back to your spot and you're going to pick up the paper. I'm going to have Beryl. Beryl can you come over here. Beryl's going to hand out these papers to each of your desks. I want you to get out two colored markers and a pencil and get your listening ears on. So we're going to do 30 seconds of a transition. Okay, 30 seconds on your mark. Get set, go. Here you go. Can you just pass these out? Awesome. Hey, Nick, remember to be quiet. Not yet, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thumbs up. Awesome. I see them all. Good transition. You gained four seconds. So we're at 8.58. Just one minute and two seconds till the party. Yay. Good transition, guys. Okay. So now I have a few questions for you. I have two. We might do a third for a bonus. But what I want you to do is I want you to do these in the pair shares. You're going to be sharing with your partner. So raise your hand if you're A. Awesome. And raise your hand if you're B. When will you're B. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to ask you first question. That's for part A only. And then I am going to have Francis. You're going to tell me what the answer is, okay? Awesome. So our first question is, what was the role of a conductor on the Underground Railroad? Let me go. What was the role of a conductor? Yeah, so the conductor got the Underground Railroad. What do they do? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Okay, awesome guys. And you're gonna all look up here. Francis, what is the role of a conductor on the Underground Railroad? Great. 
to which states? Yes, the northern ones. So we're going to get those slaveries, those in slavery and those who are fugitives up north to where they are safe. Okay, what are some qualities that Harriet has described by the author? So what does the author say that she is like? And I am going to have Young, you're going to answer this one, okay? So think, pair, share, let's share with your partners first. Awesome. Okay, Young, what are some qualities that Harriet has? Yeah, just seems to be like two qualities. Yeah, she's brave. Good. What's another one? Yes, she's very compassionate. Okay, so can anyone tell me why they think Harriet is brave? Right, yes, the author says that she was brave because she was able to go and escape slavery and help people and go back and forth. Yeah, that's something that's really dangerous, especially at her time. Why was she caring? What makes her caring? Yeah, exactly. Good job. Okay, awesome. We are now going to do our transition. Again, you have your papers in front of you and your pens and your marker. So let's talk about lemonade over here. First, let me define what it is. A is your answer. D is your decide. And E is your explain. So first you're going to answer what is the author's point of view. Then you're going to describe it. Describing, making sure that you are telling a student or a peer why that's the author's point of view, and then explain, use details from the text to be able to explain.